are going. <laughs> Alrighty. Welcome to Tiki Time. Hi guys. Welcome Number one podcast to... in the world. Alex okay. is very confident. I am very confident. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so today we have on Mr. Robert Powell. He is a six degree black belt, has won world champions, and he is my coach. So how are you today? I'm doing good. Doing good. How go. are you guys? Good. We're doing you know, good. Ready to get this started. <laughs> it's gonna be a long day. Alrighty, so first thing is how did you get into Taekwondo? Um, I like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when I was eight. I feel that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I got a. Uh, I, I got my uh, my Taekwondo uniform as a uh, Christmas present from my parents when I was eight. Okay. And uh, never really looked back. Nice. Alrighty. So, knowing that, how, why, why did you decide to open up a school? For um, my dad was a, uh, a business owner and, um, so I knew that I always kind of wanted to follow that path of being my own boss. Yeah. And, um, as a, as a, as a teenager, my dad would always kind of just put it in the back of my head of like, Hey, you know, ta- Taekwondo would be a nice fallback plan if whatever it is that you want to do doesn't work out yeah um and i was big into baseball so i played a lot of baseball so i wanted to go into um sports therapy yeah when i was mm-hmm. in college okay in high school and uh, i got into my sophomore year of college and figured out that uh in order to go and do that and own a business and run a a, a sports science type of business i'd basically have to go and get my doctorate Okay. And uh, I was like, if I'm going to go be a doctor, I'm not going to be a sports doctor. I just yeah. too much school. It wasn't for me. Yeah. At the end of the day, um, four years of college was all I had. And, <laughs> yeah. And, um, so I kind of changed course and um, went and did uh, sports physiology and then um, minored in business. And okay started <clears throat> part of my program within that was uh, I had to go do an internship and so I was playing baseball here in McKinney okay. over the summers yeah mm-hmm. and um, came and I had a taekwondo school in McKinney and did my internship there and figured out that I really liked to teach kids and that I kind of had a knack for it and okay went from there and uh, taught there after I graduated for two years and just fell and got lucky come being able to find a spot in Rockwall and yeah. the rest is history. Nice. So you said you, uh, when you started your internship, you like found a knack for teaching. What would you say is your favorite part about teaching? Um, my favorite part about teaching is uh, watching, watching people transform. Um, a lot of people, a lot of kids, when they walk into the door, whether it be a lack of confidence, whether it be they need discipline, whether it be they, um, you know, struggle with finding their voice or talking back to mom and dad or whatever it is, and being able to motivate them and show them that they can do things that they didn't think they could do, and then you just kind of breathe that into um, other areas of their life. Okay. No, that was like deep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Alrighty, so like, when did you s- start doing all the big tournaments? Or what was the first big one that... So, I got my black belt uh, when I was 12. And, um... In the next couple of years after that, I kind of waffled. And my dad really had to work on uh, not getting me to quit. Yeah. Um... And I was just kind of going through the motions as a 13, 14 year old. Yeah. Um, But then I was in class one day and I had uh, a a guest instructor come in and teach and he was trying to find teenagers who were interested in um, competing and going to Italy. Okay. Um, And I was like, well, Italy kind of sounds cool. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, I want to go do that. Yeah. Yeah. And so... um, then it became 
I passionate for two years to get ready for that tournament, and I went and competed and just had a blast, enjoyed the whole experience, and it kind of, it pretty much changed the trajectory of my life and my thought process of what I was going to go do, and yeah. opened, the, opened my eyes to not only taekwondo, but also, you know, the world of travel, I mean, when you get to travel internationally for an event like that at that age I think is pretty special yeah and it kind of gives you a broader idea of what the world is actually like and, mm-hmm. and what uh, how lucky we are to live over here and have the uh, advantages we do is just being in America in general yeah. and um, I wanted to be able to as I got older I wanted to be able to showcase that to people I wanted to be able to take those take people on that same journey that I was taking on yeah and show them um, not only different ways to train and do Taekwondo and where it can take you, but the ability to go travel and do it at the same time, which I think is a pretty special uh, yeah. thing. I enjoy that because yeah. when I went to England and everything, that was my favorite tournament I've ever been to. Yeah. Now we're trying to go to Mexico City, which after going to England, doing all these regular tournaments, just it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> Even nationals, like I was talking with Ethan. I went there, I just wanted to see how our students did, really, because <laughs> we had our things, which, you know, continuous was fun, but I was just there to see students compete at that point, because I know my thing now is just international tournaments and worlds, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. But I mean, that, <clears throat> what, you, what would you say is something that you learned out of going and doing that with a different mindset and viewpoint now that you have traveled internationally and are an instructor? I think I'm just like not necessarily less fearful but now I feel more prepared and now I'm, I feel like over, a little bit like over prepared for nationals and like those regular tournaments and like the fact that I was able to go over there and win like five golds and two bronzes it really showed me that I if I put my mind to something I can really do anything and that was the biggest challenge I think I've really ever had biggest thing I've ever had to really prepare for mentally to be like yeah I'm about to do this and now that I've gotten over the you know sort of fearfulness of competing over there I feel like I can do anything and then I'm seeing the same people over here at nationals every single year and it's like going over there and competing with people I've never even seen before if I was able to win that and I'm I know in my heart I can beat the people who I've seen every seen every year sure and do all and that. It's probably more exciting because, like, the yeah. same people you compete against every year, you already sort of know yeah. how they are, what they do. Yeah, that's probably the same with you for tennis. Whenever you, yeah, yeah, it's exciting to play against a school you like haven't really played or it's not in your district because it's people that you don't necessarily like train with if they live nearby or you know, yeah, you see usually at tournaments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the excitement of playing somebody new is a challenge too mm-hmm. right like yeah. you got to figure them out they're trying to figure you out the yeah. things that probably don't work as well in practice for you because mm-hmm. your, your teammates know who you are and what you're good at and what you're trying to accomplish yeah um they work against somebody that you don't know yeah so it's fun figuring out the new people as well. <laughs> I find that, <laughs> that that's all part of the challenge, and yep. that's what we all try to try to find in ourselves as we are practicing against the people that we don't know. Is just mastering those things that we do really well. Yes. And then when we go against somebody new, they work even better than we anticipate a lot of the times. Now, what was the biggest tournament you've ever been to? Uh, the biggest tournament that I went to was in 2016 when I went to uh, Budapest. Okay. For the uh, ITF World Cup. How was that? Um, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, there were something like 2,000 black belts or, two, you know, I yeah. mean, it was just a, an incredible event, incredible to uh, be in that, uh, the same arena with such talented people. Yeah. Um, it kind of really reinvigorated me as far as um, competition and wanting to bring um, my students to a competition that yeah. is truly, truly top level. Yeah. Um, and, and give them a different viewpoint. And, um, it was, in my opinion, it was, it was basically the, the major leagues of what we do. Yeah. Um, and 
and that was a pretty cool thing to to see and watch and be able to be a part of and it was just a a really cool experience yeah now is that your favorite one you've been to as well or um i mean favorite as far as the competition yes okay um most competitions that I'd been to internationally, the biggest tournaments were, you know, maybe there was 25 people in my division. Okay. And in this one, there was 68. I mean, wow. so it, yeah. was, it was it was far and away bigger. Yeah. And like almost tripled. Yeah, and it, it was just a, um, a totally different type of feeling and atmosphere walking in there yeah nobody knew who i was yeah. you know and um you know that that just made it um even more enjoyable yes less pressure <laughs> there you go that's true all righty now which one was did you win gold in budapest or no i won bronze okay i took good. i took the guy who won the gold medal into overtime and i lost okay so. Now, how many golds have you won in the past? Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, too many. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't count like that. Okay. Um, I do have, I do have tournaments that medals mean a lot more than some other yeah. tournaments. Um, <clears throat> but I had a tournament similar to your tournament where you went and won. Would you say five golds and two silvers? Yeah. Um, I had a tournament like that in Toronto in 2002. It okay. was my first time competing in the adult division. Yeah. And I won gold in fighting and won two golds in board breaking. Yeah. We won team gold in board breaking. We won team bronze in fighting. Okay. Um, so that one was, um, was pretty cool and kind of gave me the confidence to know like, oh, okay, I, I belong. You yeah. know, when you move from the junior ranks to the adult rank it changes things yeah um you know being being a top dog in the junior ranks is one thing but when you go from fighting 16 and 17 year olds to turning 18 and going from 18 to 35 yeah there's a huge huge gap yeah and um so that was a lot of fun and being able to kind of like okay like i can compete with the adults i yes. am good enough like those sort of things kind of yeah. gave me the confidence to move forward into uh, other events. Confidence to me is just like, is one of the biggest things about tournaments. I feel like if you have more skill than a person, but you're a lot less confident, I, I don't think it's going to work out sometimes. Yeah. Sure. I, I like, I, this was a couple of years ago at Nationals. Uh, there was a guy who, I, he has a lot more talent, like kicking wise and everything than me, but. I was still able to overcome him because he wasn't the most confident person mm -hmm. in the ring. And to me, I feel like confidence can push you over to win most of those fights when coming to it. Well, yeah. but you're not confident in your skills. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> that's rather loud. Ethan's got me. <laughs> 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 I feel like sometimes people lower their level of play. Or not, or I guess in Taekwondo the way you kick stuff and yeah. people um just because you're not confident so yeah so i agree with you it's a big thing i need to work on my confidence <laughs> <laughs> got it but alex is like the most confident person i know <laughs> well you, you know i mean uh, that the i a lot taekwondo has a lot to do with that yeah for me. probably i feel yeah i mean but i also think that um you know you've learned how to carry yourself in a way in which mm -hmm. shows that you are confident in yeah. yourself and that kind of like breeds and oozes this you know energy of yeah. like i know i can take care of myself so i can walk around yeah in a way with my chest out and my chin up of yes. just and, and that's what I love about being able to teach Taekwondo is watching yes. watching a seven year old cry for 30 minutes because they can't do something or struggle for three months because they can't do something and then boom by the just like a light switch turns on and all of a sudden the gleam in their eye happens and everything changes just because yes. they saw themselves do something they didn't think they can do yeah and when you repeat that that process over and over and over and over and over again 
then the hope is that you do produce some, something like Alex. Yes. And that's what's really cool about it. Yeah. Now, going from there, third degree training. <laughs> <laughs> Have you enjoyed teaching that to... Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a different style of teaching that I get to do that is um, very different than my normal days. Yeah. You know, I, I get to teach you guys kind of like real, real, real self-defense, real martial arts. Yes. Much less pointed within the concept of tournaments or, yes. uh, you know, scoring points. Yeah. It's much more about, you know, living or, yeah. everyday streetwise martial arts, yes. which, you know, you can't teach to somebody. It's well, it's a lot harder to teach them at eight. Yes. You know, and sometimes the, it, it's um, it's too much. Yeah. And so when you become more of an adult at 16, you're driving on your own. You're making yes. adult decisions within that context. You're trying to figure out what you're going to do with your future, whether it's go to school or go get a job or whatever yeah. it is. You're making those kind of adult decisions, and so yes. you need to be treated like one. Yes. And so I think that that, for me, is kind of the stair step into the next realm of like, okay, well, here's something that you probably didn't know was out there. Yes. Let's master this the way that you have come this far to master Taekwondo yeah. in that regard. I think that's like me and Ethan were talking about this, that, like, learning this new stuff is, like, lit a new fire underneath us because now mm -hmm. we're trying new things and learning new things, which mm -hmm. we... It's really enjoyable to us. Sure. Like, and may, other people may not enjoy it as much as I do, but I love just the whole fighting and everything. And I think... Just I know doing, you do. <laughs> <laughs> doing that, I feel like, you know, it's helping me to relax in a weird way whenever mm -hmm. I'm regularly going. Yep. Like... I don't think about it every time, but every now and then, whenever I'm sparring, I'm like, just relax. Because whenever we're doing our regular stuff, if I relax, I'll probably perform a lot better. Yep. Think yeah. about everything, which that third degree has helped me in that aspect of everything and just relaxing and being in control. But did you ever have to go through like this type of third degree training? Or No, I, I, I didn't. I, I got my training through, through doing big tournaments. Okay. Um, it took me probably until I was 26, 27 before I was able to relax like that, yeah. like I needed to, Yeah. in order to truly, um, I, I, I think in order to truly get to my potential, Yeah. Um, I could practice and do smaller tournaments and that sort of thing and, 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 and really do well. Yeah. But then going to the international tournaments, whether it was the hype or the wanting it too much yes. or those sort of things where I didn't I didn't perform the way that I wanted to perform. Yeah. And um, so it took me a long time to be able to relax and slow the world down and not let the adrenaline get to me. Yeah. And and those sort of things that I'm trying to teach you at yeah. a much younger age yeah. that um that I think are huge benefits. Yeah. That I, I just think that the that when I was coming up through the ranks, my instructors um, either didn't didn't realize it or didn't know how to to put those things into context. Yeah. Um, where I you know I I got all of that from um, Scott Wilkinson, which I know has been on y'all's podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, He's a character, <laughs> yeah. but um, but but that's where I got a lot of this uh, of the third degree training from. Okay. I mean, I I understood the the mental aspect of it. Yeah. Um, but getting you guys to a certain point within the mental game and pushing you guys in a different way yeah. was something that um, that I needed it as an as an instructor as well. Yeah. Um, and I and you know. Uh, I'm growing just like you guys are growing within the concept of that. Yeah. I'm growing as an instructor. I'm getting better at being able to to push you guys to limits you didn't know you had yes. within that context. And I think that it's um it's been good for everybody. Yes. It's been very enjoyable. Uh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> now outside of Taekwondo, what other things do you like yeah. to do? Like Um yeah, I, I really love being outside. Yeah. Um, I love to hunt and fish. Yeah. Um, 
it's it's my peaceful getaway to be able to get out into the woods and not see people not hear cars yeah um just be able to kind of reconnect to to the world basically and kind of yes. let go of um stress. all the stress yeah. and the uh, the day-to-day monotony of life yeah um and i think that um that that really just kind of recenters me yeah and if i don't do that regularly i'm not a, i'm not probably not a nice person <laughs> yeah are you uh do you play any other sports outside of taekwondo or participate in um I'm, when i was in high school i played a lot of baseball i played baseball in college okay and uh so that kind of gave me um the the outlet of doing something different so that my my sole focus wasn't just taekwondo yeah and i think that that kind of saved me from the burnout yes um and um i i really enjoy the game it's a it's a strategic game technical game yeah um and so th- I think that in ways that that's helped me with Taekwondo as well. Yeah. I, <laughs> I tried baseball, but <laughs> sucked at it. But like your bowling skills. But. Oh, me too. I can't, I can't throw to like save my life. So it's okay. <laughs> um, do you do like any other type of martial arts or just Taekwondo? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't actively do other types of martial arts. I've cross trained um, when I was in my 20s. Um, whether it's going to, you know, three or four day seminars and training 12 to 15 hours a day and those kind of things and doing special events in that regard. Um, but as far as like actively training a specific different martial art continuously, no. Um, but, but I do incorporate some of those into, um, my taekwondo school whether it be boxing or um you know different self-defense arts or um weapons yeah you know those sort of things that aren't necessarily kicking and punching yeah yeah now what was your favorite one besides taekwondo that you went to a seminar for and learned um i actually really like um the kali stick um okay. stick fighting oh yeah um that's a that's a lot of fun for me yeah it's gives you the same angles and um um thought process and uh, of using a knife in a knife fight but it's a filipino martial art and it's um it's a lot of fun yeah it's uh just a different concept of movement yeah than in taekwondo and um angles um, and all of those martial arts kind of tie together, you yeah. know, whether it be a weapon martial art or ground martial art or a knee striking or, or hands and feet or just hands. Yeah. Th- they, they all tie together in one way or another, whether it be their footwork or their movement or what they're trying to accomplish or the way that you need to think about how to successfully throw whatever move there is that you're trying to get to. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you say are some of the life skills you teach your students that you think are like important for them, not only as Taekwondo students, but as like young adults and like younger kids, like they're going to be like the future generation per se? Um, well, I, I think that, um, that people bring their kids in for a multitude of reasons, but two or three of the biggest ones are um, discipline, confidence, um, self-control. They, they want them to have fun, but in an environment in which it can be constructive within those contexts. Yeah. And um, I think that, that being courteous and disciplined are two of the bigger things that can get you ahead in life. Okay. If yeah. people think you're a nice person because you're courteous and you say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, then I think they look at you differently. You mature, fa- you, you sound mature faster. Yeah. Um, you, you're taken more seriously, quicker. 
Um, and then if you're disciplined, then, you know, you're more likely to get your stuff done. Yeah. And you're more likely to be responsible yeah. and those sort of things. And I think that that all ties into being a, a better person. Yeah. Definitely. There you go. I think I that's agree. What's your biggest accomplishment so far? Oh, that's a good uh, within, within what context? Uh, here, we'll do two. Uh, life. And then Taekwondo, we'll just do two. Um, life goal? Um, um, I think that um, just being being a better person yeah. on a day to day level. Yeah. It took me um, it took me some time to be able to to be able to be somebody who wanted self improvement yeah. on a personal level. Yeah. Okay daily mm -hmm. and try to strive to be a better person yeah all the time um was was something that I, you i lost track of in my 20s yeah of just being like you know this is who i am mm -hmm. and you know i kind of got lost in the business or lost in being married and yeah. lost track of the the oh well I, I still need to work on being a better version of myself yeah and so i think that as i've grown older and matured that i've become better at you know not losing sight of of that which i think is really important yeah yeah um taekwondo wise i think that um just being able to run a successful business yeah um, and being able to provide something to the community that I think is beneficial yeah. to um, to a bunch of people and kids as they grow up, and and that's really fulfilling. Yeah. Um, so now, do you enjoy having like your students like teach for you, or like? Or would you do you prefer like having an outside person to come in to teach? Um, I do like having um, my students teach. I think that um, I think it teaches them a valuable lesson within the context of learning how to talk to somebody and communicate to somebody about what they are trying to achieve yeah. changes their way of thinking within the context of how do I communicate something to you that is a way that you can understand it yeah but I'm not sounding condescending or sarcastic yeah um, and I'm being positive to you about a way in which you can handle whatever I'm putting in front of you to go achieve yeah and I think that that changes the way that teenagers that come through the system and and come and teach for me yeah. communicate differently. Yeah. And they have a different way of looking at things and problem solving because yeah. they the context is different. Yeah. They're not just problem solving for themselves the way that a lot of people do. Yeah. They're trying to also figure out this puzzle for this other person so that this yeah. other person can see, oh, this is the step I need to take next. Yeah. And and I think that that, that critical thinking is, is huge in the development of teenagers being able yes. to become productive adults. Yeah. And it's helped me with like trying to learn how to deal with different people, mm -hmm. different personalities, like you said. And then it's also really enjoyable. So like, how did, what made you start having your students begin teaching? Well, I, I think it's a natural progression of a Taekwondo school like I'm trying to create. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love teaching all ages. You know, the four and five year olds are fun. Yeah. You know, they're like herding cats, but <laughs> at the same time, they're, they're they smile the biggest they give you the most emotional reaction yeah um you know super excited yeah they're super yeah. Th there's no better excitement than that age <laughs> yeah then the seven eight nine ten year olds are also fun you can teach them a little bit more yeah they're a little bit more um coordinated and athletically put together so you can yeah. still give them strategic concepts of what they're trying to accomplish and they right. can start to grasp those things yeah and but one of my favorite ages is the 12 13 14 15 year old age yeah. bracket 
the teenagers as much as they are a conundrum to themselves and to the world <laughs> um they are also fun to kind of like we're going to plug a hole here and we're going to plug a hole here and then all of a sudden the ship rises that they didn't even know existed. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's really cool to kind of watch them transform and and grow. And part of that is being able to give them an incentive to go after, to, yeah. to attack, whether yeah. it be a tournament or teaching or... Yeah. Um, curriculum or yeah. rank or whatever it is that yeah. um, that I can kind of put in front of them is like, hey, this is the next step. This is what you're trying to accomplish now. Yeah. yeah. And um, so when it comes to teaching, I, I think that that's just a natural progression of a healthy school. Yeah. Is if you can develop your younger kids correctly, yeah. Then you're inevitable to get teenagers yeah. that want to continue the progress. Yeah. yeah. And so then, then the next step is like, okay, well, you've done this really, really well. Here's an opportunity to teach. Yeah. You know, if you want a job as a teenager, a lot of times you have to go work in the service industry yeah. or yeah. in retail. Mm -hmm. And you're inevitably dealing with um, a different walk of life. Yeah. And you're working weekends yes. and those sort of things. And so I'll, I think that if you're qualified that doing a job like this or like gymnastics or cheerleading yeah. or any of those other things where you can go and be a coach yes. as a young person, yeah. then I think that there are great avenues for you to be able to grow within the context, like I said earlier, yeah. within communication, but also in the fact that you're getting paid with something that you like, it's a skill. Yes. And and then you're not, most of the time, you're not having, at least in my industry, you're not working Friday nights and yes. Saturdays, and so yeah. you kind of have a little bit more freedom on your weekends. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's treated more like a true job uh -huh. instead yeah. of in the, and another, in those different service industries. The thing I enjoyed about it as well is like, at Nationals, one of my favorite memories is whenever I'm, I was coaching our students when they're doing mm -hmm. the continuous and mm -hmm. building those relationships with those students, yeah. being able to help them and then they, them wanting you to help them with their tournaments. To me, that's one of the coolest things is being able to have yeah. those relationships with your students. And yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, it's cool. I mean, what other, name other 16 and 17 year olds that become a role model. Yeah. You know, and are looked into that thought process of, hey, I want to be you when I grow up. Yes. That, yeah. You know, I mean, this, it's not something that happens very often. Yes. And so it's a really cool process to sit back and watch the kids that when they were seven or eight were saying, hey, I want to be you. Yeah. And now you get to watch other kids say, hey, it's not about wanting to be Mr. Powell, it's about I want to be Mr. Taylor, yeah. or I want to be Mr. Dingman, or yes. Miss Simmons. And so those are things that are really cool to kind of watch that evolution happen. Yeah. And it's just another thing for me as the, as the owner that I get to watch everybody yes. grow, and which yeah. is again part of the process of being a teacher. Yeah, now what's the next? big thing are you just going to continue the school forever or do you have any big plans I'm, i don't have anything grandiose i mean i want to yeah. continue to improve th my business yes. and um you know i, I want to more than anything when it comes to the businesses i, I just want to um slow steady growth yes i mean really one of my big one of my big things would be like i would like to I would like to think that I'm creating a program in which people like yourself one day want to actually go and open their own. Yeah. Yeah. And grow the community within that context. Yes. Yeah. So having having students that want to go and own their own business yes. and have the freedom that it provides you. Mm -hmm and then being able to have them go and have an impact on a community like I hope that I have had here in Rockwall yes. yeah. and and just grow that. 
Yes. And, and I think that that would be really cool. Which I definitely do want to. That's one of the things I talk about with my parents all the time is opening up a Taekwondo school and just owning a business, which mm -hmm. is now really all I really want to do at this point. That's cool. uh, nice. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, it, it comes back down to, for me, like, just another stair step in the evolution of teaching somebody, you yes. know, like I, I want to, I want to show somebody how to run a business properly yeah. and how to put a program together that can work for them yeah. and give them a career and a good life yes. and, and provide a service to a community that I think is really valuable. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I had one last question for you. Sure. What is some advice you would give just in general to people, whether it be relating to your mental strength that you need when being an athlete or just to opening up your own business? What are just some advices or some pieces of advice you would give? Um, when it comes to, comes to the mental side of it, um, believe in yourself. Put okay. it, if, if you put in the right work and you believe in yourself and you take failures as a challenge instead of a negative thing that happened. Okay. You know, um, I, <laughs> I traveled internationally for two decades yeah. and it took me a full decade yeah. to be able to, to win in Europe and cross the pond yeah. and go uh -huh. do perform the way that I wanted to perform yeah and you know that that's something that I think people lose sight of when they say oh you're you're this or you're that they don't they, they only see the successes yeah they don't see the failures that happened over and over and over again in order to reach that success yeah they think it's instant and it's mm -hmm. not most yeah. of the time yeah um so, so that's what I, I, I think about that sort of mental side of the game is take the failure as a challenge okay. instead of this okay. I failed, I'm not good enough type mindset. Yeah. Okay. And um, if you, I think if you live your life that way, then you will be much more sturdy. Yeah. When life swings at you, you'll, you'll be a little bit more prepared and understand how to take failure and move forward. Yeah. One of the um, one of the one of the coolest things that was ever said to me uh, when it came to that thought process was when I was going to open up my business. Mm -hmm. I asked my dad, you know, like a month before we we're going to open the doors, like, what happens if I fail? Yeah. Uh, what do I do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, you know, the hope is is that you learn from it. Yeah. yeah. And you figure out a way to fix the problems that you had. Yeah. And you go and do it again. There you go. Which yeah. is, you know, that's that's what we say to seven-year-olds. Yeah. yeah. It's no different. The context might be a little bit different. And, yeah. you know, the, the pound of flesh that is taken from those failures might be a little bit different. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the concept is the same. Yeah. You know, if, if you fail, you just get back up and do it again. You yeah. learn. Yep. Learn from it. Yeah. Don't make the same mistakes over and over again. Yeah. But but learn from it yeah and don't stop all right and then um what was the back half of that question it's like opening a business or people who just you know want to be entrepreneurs like alex he wants to open so, up his own taekwondo yeah business. open opening up a business is one of the most rewarding and scary experiences i've ever had yeah okay. um Definitely. you know you're what I think is really cool about being an entrepreneur is you're betting on yourself. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, so you're betting that you have the work ethic, that you have the fortitude that no matter what happens, you're going to, mm -hmm. you're going to figure out a way to make it work. Yeah. And so it comes back down to that critical thinking that we were talking about earlier, Yeah. you know, and how it bleeds into other aspects of your life. Definitely. Yeah. And, um, so it's incredibly rewarding to to watch it grow and see it be successful and see other people take pride in it the way that you take pride in it. Yeah. Um, those kind of things are 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 pretty 
pretty untouchable in the thought process of mm -hmm. like wow this is this is I've done it I did it yeah um you know and as far as advice within that context again you know it, in business it's a little bit different in business you got to kind of learn how to roll with the punches yeah and just keep going mm -hmm. you know i mean through a pandemic or you know you have an ac unit that goes out or you have somebody that complains i mean there's always something that happens yeah that you just have to you 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 become a problem solver yeah is really what you are at that point is you know how do i solve this problem to achieve this yeah you know and that's just the nature of the beast and it's again the the fortitude of just no matter what happens i'm going to keep coming yeah i'm going to i'm going to keep working i'm going to do whatever it is that is necessary to make this successful yeah kind of like competing i'm gonna do yeah. whatever it takes to win i'm gonna and if i don't win this time i'm gonna find a way to to win next time yeah, yeah definitely wow. yeah all righty well thank you for words. coming on yeah thank you for absolutely all your thanks words. for having me by the way i just want to point out that you get scott wilkinson and ethan dingman on this podcast before i even get an invite oh no, how no, does no, that no. work no we all sent out <laughs> the invites on the same day <laughs> No, I, I know, Alva. I know. <laughs> I know, know, but I gotta, I gotta get him a little bit. <laughs> we, hey, you should make me do whatever fitness it is in the gym. <laughs> Ethan's better I'm at kidding. bowling. I'm kidding. And Wilkie was just there, you know. Hey, it's okay. okay. It's, okay. it's all right. I just gotta give, you a, gotta give you a little bit of smack. I gotta give you a little bit of smack. Okay. All right. Yeah. Nice save. Nice Wil save. Wilkie called you out on on his episode. Do you have anything to say to him? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Wilkie is a small little fella, <laughs> and as you know, in our sport, length matters, and I'll just leave it at that. All right. Okay. There we go. All righty. Well, thank you for coming on. Yes, thank you. Very, I've enjoyed this podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. You had some very wise words and good advice to give to people, and it would, I think I'm going to learn from it, because I definitely feel like... I need to be a little bit more confident in everything, and it was really great hearing you talk about it. So. Well, Thank good, you. good. Glad to hear it. There you go. Absolutely. All righty. Well, we'll catch you next Thursday, I Thank think. Thank you for joining. Yes. Go follow our Insta. Yeah, and our YouTube or <laughs> yeah. Spotify. Whatever you're listening to this on. Apple Podcasts. We're everywhere. Wherever. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Anytime. We'll, we'll see y'all. <laughs> Bye.